What's up, guys? This is Lenny Kaiser from Sequence One Music School. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a custom patch from scratch using the Wavetable synth in Ableton. Here's the sound we're going to make. I've got a default Wavetable loaded, and I've already written a chord progression to use for designing the patch. Let's start shaping our sound by selecting a Wavetable to work with. So to select a wavetable, in this first area here, we have all of our different categories of wavetables. So I'll go ahead and select Vintage. And next to that, we can select the individual wavetable here. I'll choose JX10 Sync. All right, so let's go ahead and loop our clip real quick with Command L. And now that we've selected our wavetable, we can scrub through the wave position with this slider here. A couple things to point out, we can select different wavetables with these arrows here. And we can change the view of the visualization section with the linear or the polar buttons up here. We'll also notice that wavetable for each oscillator has a panning control. We can double click to set that back to center. And we also have a volume control for the oscillator. Cool. So let's mangle our wavetable a little bit by selecting one of the oscillator effects here. I'll go with modern. And we see now we have a warp percentage and a fold percentage. So these are gonna apply phase distortion, in this case with the modern effect. And let's see what it does. Next, let's add a little bit of fold percentage here. All right, so let's add a second oscillator to our sound. So I'll click on the oscillator 2 tab and turn it on. And let's choose the collection category and the wavetable cobalt. And let's change the wave position. And that's starting to sound pretty good. So wavetable has two oscillators and it also has a sub oscillator here, which you can turn on with this button. We have a gain control for the sub. We have a tone control. And we can choose what octave the sub is playing back in. So this will be lower. And for this sound, we're not gonna use the sub oscillator. We also have a global transpose here. And we have semitone tuning. and detuning here. At this point, we've selected our waveforms and tweaked the oscillator effects to create this preset. But right now, the overall sound is a little too bright, brittle, and well, it's kinda uninteresting. That's okay, because next we'll use the filter and amp to shape the tone and create a more modern, futuristic chord sound. So we'll start with the amp envelope over here in the Mod Sources tab. And I'll start by lowering the sustain all the way down. So once I do that, because the sound is now mostly attack and decay, and then some release, when we shorten the decay time, we'll notice that the sound gets more plucky. And let's go ahead and soften up these chords by slowing the attack time down a little bit. Yeah. 
And then let's extend the release just a tiny bit. Here's a quick pro tip. Set your amp envelope parameters while the MIDI clip is playing. That way you can make adjustments so it sounds best in the performance. You wouldn't necessarily want a release time that's so long that it smears over the next chord hits, making everything muddy and cloudy. So you want to adjust this accordingly while you're listening. All right, so let's move on to the filter section here. We'll notice that in the filter section, we have two filters, which we can turn on and off here. We can select our different filter types. We can choose the slope for each curve. We can choose different modeling circuits for the filter type. So I'm going to go with MS2 here. And let's increase the resonance a little bit. And then to add a little bit of character, I'm going to add 2 dB of drive. All right, so before we set the final destination of the filter, I'm going to lower the volume of wavetable about 2 dB because I started to notice that on the track volume, it was starting to peak. Okay, back to the filter section. So you can turn on a second filter by turning it on there. And you can run the two filters in either serial, parallel, or split. So for this example, we're just gonna use the one filter, so I'm gonna turn this one off. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the filter down to about 88 hertz to mask a lot of the high frequencies. And I bet you thought it sounded pretty cool when the filter was moving around. Next, I'm going to show you how to create movement in the filter by using the modulation matrix to route an envelope to control it. The matrix allows you to assign modulation sources such as envelopes and LFOs to parameters in the synthesizer. Let's start by adding some movement in our filter by assigning envelope two to control the filter. So we'll start by clicking on the matrix tab and to get a parameter to populate in the matrix, we just need to click on it. It's pretty easy. And then if we wanna assign a modulation source such as envelope two, we just need to find where they line up in the matrix. Then we can choose to either give it a positive or a negative value, which will move the filter in this case in different directions. So in this case, I want to move the filter open with envelope two, so I'm gonna add a positive value. So you can hear now that envelope two is causing the filter to open up. So let's take it one step further and adjust some of the settings on envelope two. So one way to get there is we could click on mod sources and select envelope two and adjust our settings there. But what I like to do is actually go back to the matrix tab and click the breakout toggle here. So now we can see all of our envelopes and LFOs. I'm gonna go ahead and close the browser real quick. And this is really handy because now we have access to all the envelopes and LFOs in one view. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the attack time on envelope two so that it opens up the filter a little bit more slowly. And that sounds pretty good. And I'm gonna make some other adjustments to the decay here and take this up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to take the sustain percentage down just a tiny bit. Wow. 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 
and shorten the release. Awesome. Next, I'm going to click on the slope tab here. This is going to allow you to change the curve types for the different segments of the envelope. Let's adjust the attack slope percentage and hear how it sounds. All right, let's assign a couple other modulations in the matrix so that our synth will start to sound a little more interesting and have more movement. So I'm going to assign envelope two to the amp so that it'll soften the sound up a bit. And let's also affect the oscillator one warp, but this time, let's do it with an LFO. And let's go ahead and make an adjustment on LFO1 to slow down the rate. And now let's go to oscillator two and select the wave position and let's modulate that from LFO2. And again, let's slow down the rate of LFO2. All right, the synth is sounding pretty dope. Next, we're going to add the finishing touches in the global section to make it more full sounding. So all of the global settings are located over here on the right side of Wavetable. We have a volume control, a polyphonic and monophonic button. Next to the polyphonic button, you can choose the number of voices that are allocated. You'll notice that when it is switched to monophonic, the glide time is available. If you want to add some width and fullness to your synths, then I definitely recommend checking out some of the unison mode effects. So unison modes use multiple oscillators with different phases, stereo locations, or wavetable positions to provide a more full and rich sound. So let's choose shimmer for our chords. And what you're gonna hear is that all of the oscillator pitches are gonna start to jitter at random intervals, and the result is gonna be a wider and more full shimmering type effect. Below that, you can choose how many voices you want for the unison mode, and you have an amount control to control how much of the effect you want. Next to that, we have a global time percentage here. So this is gonna control all envelopes and LFO speeds. So you'll notice as I turn this to the right, you're gonna hear everything in the synth kind of slow down. And when we go back to the left, into the negative percentages, everything's gonna get a lot faster. So let's leave it at 35%. Next to that, we have the global modulation amount. This controls how much modulation is taking place for all of the sources. So you can think of this as sort of a wet dry percentage for the modulations in the matrix. So if we were to turn this down, we hear some of those modulation sources not having as large of an effect. And I'm gonna leave it back at 100%. All right, so we're done programming our synth chord sound from scratch. And I hope you guys learned a lot about Wavetable and how to approach designing a sound.
If you'd like to learn more about Live 10, check out my online course at sequence1.org. Thank you.